this is um part two of chapter one of the um the the story I'm working on. Basically, what I said between this cut was um I'm gonna add some more information about the characters at the end. <laughs> Sorry about that. My heart stopped. I started to feel lightheaded with panic as I stared at him. What do you mean? I managed to muster out, trembling. Well, I've been seeing them lately, and if you did get attacked by one, I suggest you be careful out there if you want to get home alive. His tone was serious. I knew he wasn't messing around. So I wasn't dreaming. So Tomo was here, but what happened to him? Well, what about you? I asked, clutching the cat doll tightly to my chest as I sat up. Me? I've been here for years. Only now have I started seeing them. Ever since you arrived. He gave me a sceptical look. Did you think I was to blame? Well, I don't know why they're after me. Do you? I mumbled in fear. He didn't mean it, did he? He must be joking. Well, all I know is that they're out for your blood. That's it. All he, mur- he murmured as he poured himself a drink from the jug on the desk in front of me. His attitude had completely changed. He was so hyper five minutes ago. I just sat there, staring down in terror. What was I supposed to do? Were they my friends or just clones? I could hardly tell. I stood up and grabbed a jack from the coat rack. Huh? Where are you going? The boy asked, watching me. Out. I mumbled. Not knowing, what I was, not knowing I was about to make the biggest mistake of my life. The sky was darker than usual, and the pale moon barely shining through the gaps of the never-ending rows of trees. As I, start, as I started to wander around, flashlight in hand, I gathered resources. For a weapon, of course. But whilst forging said weapon, the whispers came back, telling me to turn back or run away. That I shouldn't trust nobody. I foolishly passed them off as a thing to scare me as I finished tying the sticks and stones together while holding the flashlight in my mouth. As I pushed myself to my feet again, I started to jog back home, although I felt like I wasn't going any faster than I was walking. In fact, I was going slower. I started to panic, gripping my fla- gri- gripping the gripping the flashlight in my hand in my in my left hand tightly, my new weapon in my right as I'm my handed after all. I started to speed up my pace, eventually dashing through the door as if somebody pushed me. I fell to the floor in a heap of exhaustion and sweat as I gasped for air, out of shock and the fact I was running, of course. The boy came sprinting over in a panic. Are you okay? He knelt down before me as I lay on the floor. I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Nothing was chasing me, I just felt like I was getting pulled back before getting shoved. I muttered, fear coursing through my blood as tears started to fall from my eyes in a panic. The boy lifted me up to a sitting position and wiped my eyes as I sobbed. I don't know how long I was crying for, but I just was. Hey, hey, don't cry. Everything's all right, I promise. Just calm down. The boy muttered softly as he lifted me up to my feet. I want to go home, I said through tears. My throat tightened, my hands shaking. shaking. Was it the creature pulling me back? Was I just hallucinating? I don't know anymore. I'm just terrified for my life. The boy led me to a small room with a bed. It's a change from the couch, I guess. Here, you can sleep here while I make dinner, he said calmly as I sat down on the bed. I couldn't sleep. All I did was cry my eyes out in terror while I waited. Suddenly, I heard the boy calling me from the other room. As I trudged in the direction of his voice, I wiped my tears from I wiped I wiped my I wiped my eyes to hide any sign of tears. I didn't want him to worry after all. As I sat down with him, he only managed to make was soup, which I didn't mind. I was starving, so anything was fine with me. I tipped the bowl up as I as I gulped the soup down before spilling it over me whilst I heard the noise. Ah, ah, hot! I screamed as I jumped up, but, but the noise had my attention more than the scorching temperature of my now spilt dinner. The boy left up too. He must have heard it as well. Hold on, sweaty hands. Did you hear that? He, I half screamed as he, as he covered my mouth. Shh, he whispered as his cat-like ears twitched. All I heard was a faint, I am you, from outside. His voice was familiar, like the whispers. The fear and shock caused me to pass out and collapse to the floor. The boy lifted me up and carrying me to bed while, where I slept the whole night. 
when I woke up, my head was, my head felt like a bunch of arrows had been shot right through it. I sleepily walked out of my room and towards the boy, who was staring out the window. What happened? I asked weakly, as he jumped from my sudden appearance behind him. Oh, you scared me. But you passed out, so I took you to bed. How do you feel? He questioned as he turned to look at me. My head hurts again. I muttered as he sat me down and passed me a drink. You're probably dehydrated. You'll be fine soon. And the noise was just a raccoon. Don't worry. He smiled. I was too weak to process anything, he said as I chugged the water before falling asleep again, leaning on the boy on accident. When I woke up again, the boy was still sat there, gently rubbing my back as comfort. I sat up and rubbed my eyes, yawning as I muttered. <sighs> Sorry about that. I guess I didn't sleep all well last night. You seem like you needed it too, he giggled. You're out cold. Heck, that's the first time I've ever heard someone sleep talk. I sleep talk? I mumbled. Yeah, you were saying stuff like, Grammy warned you, and oh my god, Neil Cicerega. I find it funny. He laughed to himself while mi- whilst mimicking, mimicking my apparently sleepy voice. I giggled too, before breaking into a laughing fit. The boy looked at me with surprise before laughing too. We laughed for a while before I started to explain what I was sleep-talking about, him nodding along with what I had to say. It was a pretty good day overall. I felt fine since then, although I always have this strange feeling about everyone I meet. He's not one of them. Is he? I'm also going to give some, like, information on, like, the characters as well. So, for example, um, Elliot, he is, well, he is actually, like, another variation or at least the version that I'm using of, you know, normal Elliot that we know. Um, Elliot, he he does sleep talk, he does sleep walk sometimes, and he has very, very, very bad trust issues. And the cat-eared boy, his hair is like a weird coloured white, his eyes are like a dull grey, and he mainly wears like tattered clothing since he's been there for years. And the creatures, the creatures that I'm gonna like, <laughs> I'm actually gonna like um animate. <laughs> Um, the characters as like vines and memes and stuff like that because I thought <laughs> there was this one vine that I saw. Um, yeah, was I like, getting sleeping or dead? Hopefully, dead. I hate him anyway. Yeah, so did I. And then Elliot just wakes up. Okay, first of all, fuck you. I thought I thought it fit, so I've just decided to like do that now. So eh, <laughs> that's a little like thing that is coming up. Uh, I I might actually post it after um posting this, um if I do get around to finishing it today. <laughs> so that's a fun little thing that you guys are gonna know. <laughs> oh my god.